Welcome to From His Heart, as we celebrate mothers who are a vital pillar for the family, but there's more needed for a foundation. Join Pastor Jeff Shreve today as he shares the keys to a joyful family. In this message, how firm is your foundation? Now, a successful marriage, a successful family, isn't a family, isn't a marriage that doesn't ever have trouble. Because everybody has trouble. It's real life. How in real life can you build a marriage and a family that not only survives, but thrives? One that really experiences love and joy and peace. That's not a pipe dream, that's not a fairy tale. That's what God wants to infuse in every marriage and into every family. Those are the things that come from God, love and joy and peace. And he wants that for you and your family and your marriage. He wants that in spades. So we're going to talk about that in the weeks ahead, how to build a family like that, how to build a family, a marriage that can last And stand the test of time. Well, to kick us off, we're going to be in Psalm 127 in a message I've entitled, How Firm is Your Foundation? This is Psalm 127. It's a psalm attributed to Solomon. It's a song of ascents, which means that the Jews, when they would make their pilgrimage to Jerusalem, they had to do that three times a year for the great feasts. And as they would ascend the hill of Jerusalem, Jerusalem is on a hill, they would sing these particular psalms. They were called psalms of ascent as they would ascend the hill of Jerusalem. And this is one that speaks about the family. It says, unless the Lord Yahweh builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to retire late, to eat the bread of painful labors, for he gives to his beloved even in his sleep. Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They shall not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. God is pro-family. God is pro-marriage. And God wants to bring a man and a woman together in holy matrimony and bless them and have them build a home that stands the test of time, a home that is filled with love and joy and peace. And children, when they come into that home, they're a gift from God. The fruit of the womb, it's not a penalty, it's a reward. So here's our question for today. Hey, what does it take to have a successful marriage and family? What does it take to have a happy home? Three key ingredients. Ingredient number one. It takes the right home builder. You're going to have a happy home. You're going to have a successful marriage and family. It takes the right home builder. Listen to it again. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Now, how many in this room have ever gone through uh, the situation of buying a plot of land and getting with a builder and having that builder build you a house. Anybody in this room, you've had that experience? Uh, Many of us. Debbie and I never have. We've always just bought a house that's already been made. But my brother had a house. He had a builder, and he had him make that. And my brother's an attorney, and his wife's an attorney. And the builder wanted to to slash his wrists after working with them because, you know, everything just had to be so, and there was always the threat of lawsuit, and it was was just awful. I hope he's not watching this. But uh, (laughs) 
Anyway, you know how it is. I mean, most builders and doctors and people like that, they don't really like to work on lawyers because there's always the, the threat there. Uh, but it, he hired, my brother Larry, he hired a builder. Now, the scripture says, makes it very clear, when it comes to not constructing a house with brick and mortar, but constructing a home, a family, with love and trust and peace and joy, you and I don't have what it takes. We're not able to build the house. We're not able to build the family. We're not able to do it unless the Lord does it. They labor in vain who try to build it. Unless the Lord guards this city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to retire late, to eat the bread of painful labors. You can't build your home. You can't protect your home. You can't provide for your home in terms of a loving, joyous, God-blessed family. You can't do it. You don't have it within you to do it. Now, it it says here that it is vain. Three times God says that. It is vain, it is vain, it is vain. That word vain means to be useless, to be empty, to be worthless. Now, your, your labor and all your sweat and toil and hard work... It's just useless. God says it's worthless. It's never going to happen because you can't do it on your own. I love the word labor here in the Hebrew. It means to toil, to work severely with irksomeness. I thought that was interesting. To work severely with irksomeness. What does that mean, irksomeness? We don't really use that word irksome uh, very much. But it means to be annoyed It means to to get ticked off, to be exasperated, to be in disagreement. That describes real life in marriage. Your spouse will make you annoyed from time to time. You, You and I don't have what it takes because the other person is going to irk you. And no matter how much you strive and no matter how much you sweat and no matter how much labor, the Lord says you can't build it. But, good news, he can build it. He can build it. So, he, the Lord, is the one who can build a happy home. Unless the Lord builds the house, and that word unless has this idea of, of course, truly, surely, unless he does it, it's not going to get done. Here's the thing about Jesus. He is the Lord. Know that the Lord himself is God. And as I said before I started this message, that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Psalm 100, know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. The Lord is God. And Jesus, the Lord God, before he started his public ministry, he was a carpenter and he built things, and he built stuff, and he built tables, and he built chairs, and he built plows, and he built carts. He's a builder, and and, and he's still in the building business. The song says, Jesus is a carpenter from Nazareth, from Galilee, and he's doing a construction job inside of me. Didn't leave his work when he went away because I can see him working in my life each day. And he is working in a Christian's life, and he's working in a couple's life. He wants to work in a couple's life to build their home. See, Jesus is building, as he told the disciples, he's building a heavenly home. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. What kind of a place is the Lord building for us? A a heavenly home that's just going to blow our minds. So he's building us a heavenly home. He's building our church home because he said in Matthew chapter 16, upon this rock, speaking of himself, upon this rock, I will build my church. Building a heavenly home for us, his children. Building a church home for his children. And he wants to build your family home. If you will let him. Hey, what does it take to have a successful marriage and family, to have a happy home? It takes ingredient number one, the right home builder. It takes ingredient number two, the right foundation. You get the right builder, think in terms of a physical home. You get the right builder... And then you, have a, a, you find the right plot of land. 
And if you don't have the right plot of land, a, a wise builder will say, well, I can't build there. That, that soil's not right. That, that foundation uh, where, where I would put the house, that's not any good. No, that won't work. We can't build that because that's on a slippery slope. That's on the side of a hill. That, that won't work there. You've got to find a better plot of land because foundation is critical to any home. Everybody knows that. So what is the right foundation in marriage? We get the right builder, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. But what's the right foundation where we go with the builder to find the right foundation? The right foundation in marriage and family is the Word of God. You and I must build on God's Word. Jesus made that so clear when he told the parable of the wise man and the foolish man. And he said this, the wise man built his house upon the rock and the foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and it burst against the house built on the rock and the house built on the rock stood because it was founded on the rock. But when the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and burst against the house that was built on the poor foundation that was built on the sand, it fell and great was its fall. And then Jesus says this, Therefore, Matthew 7, 24, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. Now, I want you to circle two words on your outline. Everyone who hears these words of mine, circle hears. And then he says, and acts upon them, circle acts. See, it's not enough just to hear the Lord's Word. You have to do what He says. You have to act upon it. That's what it means to build on God's Word. You hear His Word. You hear what He says. You hear His commandments, and you act upon them. You do them. Jesus said in John chapter 13, verse 17, that you are blessed not if you hear His commandments, but if you do His commandments commandments. Doing makes all the difference in the world. Hey, it takes the right home builder. It takes the right foundation. And thirdly and finally, it takes the right watchman. The right watchman. Verse 1, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. Now, it seems like the Lord switches gears from uh, the house to the city, but the word city can be translated town, and it's really a city, a town is a collection of homes. The word city could also be translated the inner room. It's a place guarded by a watchman. And, and the, the city would have people on the, the towers watching out for it at night just to make sure everything was safe. And, and I think the Lord is, he's still speaking of the family. He's still speaking of the home here. And he's saying, hey, you need someone to watch over this. And just as you're not able to build your home, you're not able to keep your home. Because the word guards means to protect. It means to keep. It means to build a hedge of protection around. And that's what the Lord does, and you and I aren't able to do that. See, we, we can't build our home. We can't provide for our home. It is vain for you to rise up early, to retire late, to eat the bread of painful lab labors. That doesn't work. It's just vain. It's empty. It's meaningless. And you can't watch over your home. The, unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. Now, why do I need... God, not only to build my home, my family, my marriage, but God to watch over my home, my family, my marriage. It's because of this. There is an adversary outside the home. His name is the devil, and 1 Peter chapter 5 says that the devil is prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's outside the gate, he's outside your property line. He's prowling around. He's walking around. When I was in Africa some years ago, we went on a safari for two days. We left the mission field and took a break and, and went on safari, and we were at the Mari Safari uh, Park, and it was a, an awesome place. 
and you're just right out there, boom, in the, in the jungle with all the animals, and you have an electric fence around you. And it's a good thing because when we went out early uh, that morning to look at animals right outside the gate of the electric fence, we saw two lions. Now, I wouldn't have slept very well in my tent had there not been a gate because I wouldn't have felt very protected. Well, the devil is like that lion. He's, he's prowling around looking and ready to pounce on whom he may devour. He's looking for an opening. He's looking for a crack in the wall, so to speak. And the Scripture says, you're not able to see him unless the Lord guards the city. The watchmen keep awake in vain. See, the devil is lurking, and he wants to destroy your home. Jesus said of the devil, the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's the devil's plan, to steal from you, to kill you, to destroy you and everyone you know. He is prowling around seeking someone to devour, and you're not able to stand up to him, but the Lord is. The Lord is greater as he who is in you than he who is in the world. So he's lurking, wants to destroy your home. Now let me just give you very quickly some ways that the devil destroys your home because he's looking for cracks to get in through the wall, to get into your home, to, bring ha to wreak havoc and destroy your marriage and destroy your family. First one, first thing he uses to destroy your home, drugs and alcohol. Drugs and alcohol will destroy a home. And everyone in this room who has experienced that in the home, whether it's mom, whether it's dad, whether it's the kids, getting into drugs and alcohol, you know that it, it, it's like experiencing hell on earth. It's awful. It's awful. I had a small taste of that when I was a kid growing up because I, I had that in my family, and it was awful. The fighting that comes from that and the unrest and, and that, man, as a, as a 10-year-old boy, it's just, it's just a nerve-wracking, oh, man, what's going on here type deal. You know, what's sad is that so many people, they don't think much of it, especially with alcohol. They don't think much of it. What do they do? At the wedding, in so many weddings, they have the toast and they lift up the glass of alcohol to say, this is what our home, let's just celebrate with alcohol. For so many, that's the thing that will destroy their marriage, that will destroy their family. My attitude toward drugs and alcohol is stay away from it. Stay away from it. You're never going to have a problem with that stuff destroying your home if you don't ever open the door there. So that's one of the ways that the devil works through drugs and alcohol. Second way he works to destroy sexual immorality. Well, you, that, that's an open door if you have sexual immorality in your marriage. Pornography is a huge problem for men and now for women. And it's, it's just a, a portal for the devil to come in and wreak all kinds of havoc and set up all kinds of strongholds in your mind. And you can't feed on that stuff for very long before you get very sick. It's like drinking out of the sewer. And so many couples are dealing with that. And listen, is there victory in that? Landon Huffer shared just a few weeks ago that he struggled with that, and God gave him victory and continues to give him victory as Landon continues to walk with the Lord and work that out with his wife. And I praise God for that. That was a strong testimony, and that speaks to so many people because so many people are struggling with that stuff. And you think it's no big deal. It's a huge deal, and it will wreck and ruin your life. It will wreck and ruin your family. Oh, the devil works through that stuff, through drugs and alcohol, through sexual immorality. How about this one? He uses unresolved conflict to destroy your home. That's when you have a fight and you never resolve it. You have an issue and you never work it out. You just sweep it under the rug. We live in a generation that that's just what they want to do. They just want to sweep it under the rug. They want to send, whole, uh, send retail and confess wholesale and just say, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, and just sweep it under the rug. They have this major fight, uh, husband and wife, and then uh, the husband's too proud to humble himself and apologize to his wife, so he just, uh, you know, they just don't talk for a day or two, and then they just go back like nothing ever happened. You can't do that. you got to deal with it. you gotta, you got to work through the issue. The Scripture says this, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, Be angry and do not sin, 
And do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not give the devil an opportunity. If you let the sun go down on your anger. See, not all anger is wrong. You can be righteously angry. But when you do get angry, if you don't deal with that anger and you let the sun go down on that anger, and you go to bed mad, and one day turns into two days, turns into three days, turns into three weeks, where you've never resolved that, that's just an open door for the devil. That's a toehold for the devil. And when the devil gets a toehold, he turns it into a foothold, and he turns that into a a stronghold. And he comes and sets up shop in your relationship, and he creates such a, a, a bitter, tense, cold atmosphere in the home. And the kids pick up on it real fast. And what's up with mom and dad? They don't, they don't seem to like each other very much. Dinner time is just such a wonderful time where no one's talking, you know, and it's just like, ugh. Have you ever been in somebody's home like that where you could tell that the husband and wife didn't really like each other very much? It's not any fun. And the kids know that, and they're just like, this is tense. Can I go eat somewhere else? Can I go hide in the attic? I mean, just anywhere to get away from that. Oh, the devil works in that way. Hey, in in marriage, you're going to have conflict. You've got to work it out. And then lastly, how about this one? How about just plain old selfishness? Plain old selfishness. You know, the devil works through our selfishness. Now, you think about the word selfishness. You look at that word, selfishness. Look at the middle part of the word. The middle part of the word is fish. It stinks. Selfishness stinks like fish. And nobody is attracted to a selfish person. You ever, you ever see somebody that's just filled with selfishness and says, oh, I'm just so drawn to you. I just, I just love the fact that it's all about you. No, we're not drawn to selfish people. We're drawn to selfless people. Now, you know why I told you it's impossible Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. You know why in and of yourself you can never have a home filled with love and joy and peace? Because some of you may be arguing in your mind, well, I, I have a home like that. I came from a home like that. We didn't trust the Lord, but we had a home like that. Let me tell you something. You don't have a home like that. It may appear like that, just like the Webb's house appeared to be a good house until something happened and the foundation fell apart. You cannot have a home filled with love and joy and peace apart from Jesus Christ because apart from Jesus Christ, all you have is self. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. Hey, it takes the right watchman, and you and I need to live sold out to Jesus Christ every single day. How do you have a good marriage? You sell out to the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, Jesus, I can't do this thing called marriage and family. I need you. And not only do I need you to build my home, I need you, Lord, to protect my home. I need you to guard my home. And I need to live every day surrendered to you. In the book of the Revelation, the Lord sends a letter to the church in Ephesus. And that church was so good in so many areas. But then Jesus says this in Revelation 2, 4. But I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen and repent and do the deeds you did at first or else I am coming to you and I will remove your lampstand out of its place unless you repent. Some of you are here, and you know what? If you're honest, and that's the only way to be with God because he sees everything anyway. If you're honest, you'd say, you know what? My marriage is not very go- going very good. My family's not going very good. My kids are not, uh, they're living in a tension-filled home. And I don't know what to do to fix it. You go back to Jesus. You come to him, the home builder. The one that will watch, the one that will protect, the one that will provide. And you humble yourself before him. And if you're a Christian and you've left your first love, you go back to him. And if you're here and you're an unbeliever and you've never really put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you come to him for the very first time and you cry out in repentance and faith, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And he will have mercy on you. And he will restore. And he will pardon. He wants to build your home. He wants to make a difference. He's waiting on you to say yes to him. My friend, the greatest of these is love. And God so loved the world, he so loved you, that he gave his only begotten son. If you have never put your faith and trust in Jesus, I want to encourage you to do that today. 
just pray this prayer with me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I know that I'm a sinner and I'm lost and I can't save myself. Jesus, I believe that you are God in the flesh. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead. Lord, right now, I surrender my all to you. Come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. Be my Lord and Savior. And I promise to follow you all the days of my life. My friend, if you'll pray that kind of prayer and mean it, the Lord will come in and your life will never be the same. I'd love to hear from you, to know that you're watching, to know that God is using this broadcast to make a difference in your life, to know that you just prayed that prayer to receive Christ as Savior and Lord. Please call me, write me, let me know what's going on and how we can pray for you. You really are important to God and you're important to us and we're here for you. Today's message, How Firm Is Your Foundation, is available in the format of your choice when you call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is known as the love chapter and reminds us of love's importance in God's eyes. And these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. In Pastor Jeff Shreve's brand new and inspiring five message series, The Greatest of These is Love, he'll take a deep dive into the enduring meaning of love and the command for us to love God and love others first because it's the greatest commandment. The Greatest of These is Love series is our special thank you gift for your support from his heart this month and available in the format of your choice. Call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org to make your gift and receive the new series, The Greatest of These is Love. Thank you for watching From His Heart today, the viewer-supported broadcast ministry of Dr. Jeff Shreve, who believes that no matter how badly you may have messed up in life, God still loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. Find out more. Go to fromhisheart.org. Real truth.